Hi, we have a club launch tomorrow, so I'm going to assemble a reloadable motor case. I've got the Aerotech 38720 case, and I'm going to use an I-366R. It's a redline motor. I've got a Mach 1 Thunderbird, and it'll go over a mile and about 700 miles per hour with this motor, and a beautiful red flame, and the rocket's painted red, so it looks really nice. So we're going to load this motor. Now, if you notice the... Uh, the label, this requires some additional hardware. So RMS hardware required, 380 aft closure, which we have, 380 600 case, which I don't have. Uh, we'll get back to that. 380 standard forward closure, which I do have, but we're not going to use. And then the forward seal disc, which you have to have purchased separately. So this is the seal disc, because this is a, a very hot, very high, uh, thrust motor you need to have a little extra protection so we're going to use the seal disc we're also going to have to use some of the RMS adapter system modules and I'll show you how this works so rather than using a, th a 38600 we can use a 720 with some of these adapters so I always leave the instructions out so I can see what it is that I'm doing before I build and then let's get to it and then always refer to the instructions as well now, the first thing I want to do is to grease the threads and the O-rings. Now, again, I'm not going to use this closure. I'm actually going to use this closure. It's a floating forward closure. That way I can use it with the adapters. And this closure, rather than being on the end, is going to be recessed. So let's get some grease. And this is just super lube. I'm going to lube these threads. This makes cleanup and disassembly significantly easier. And then I like to get just a little bit of lube inside the, the tube. I'm not going to be able to get it all the way into the middle, but just a little bit in there, just so parts can slide out when we're done versus sliding in. Uh, they'll slide in just fine. But when everything has expanded after we have launched it, that's when it's more difficult to get it out. Let's lube the O-rings. And again, when you lube these, you don't want them goopy, you just want them shiny. So just enough to get them glistening and moist, but you don't want clumps or lumps of lube on there. You're going to have an extra O-ring than you find in some of the reloadable kits. Um, that one is for the seal disc. And that O-ring is this thin one right here. Um, this is a like a 1 16th inch diameter o-ring and then I want to grease the inside where the delay goes just to make removal of that easier and as always I want to get grease around the walls of this but not on the bottom because powder is going to be on the bottom if we get grease on there there's a chance it, it won't go off now this rocket is a dual deploy so I'm not dependent on the motor ejection, so it's, it's not of utmost significance, but it's always good practice. So normally you would drill your, your delay grain. Uh, when I ran a sim on this rocket for this motor, this, the recommended delay is 15 seconds. And this is a 14 second delay, so I don't need to take anything out of there. Um, all I need to do is put it into the insulator, put the adapter in there. It's going to poke out on the opposite end, and I'm going to put the small O-ring right over that end. Now inside the uh, forward closure. I'm going to put the little disc. Goes right in there to the bottom. And then this goes in with the O-ring first. Just like that. So that's assembled. So now I'm going to take the seal disc right here and put the seal disc O-ring on there. There's a groove and it just slips right onto it and that's ready to go. We're going to take the, the liner, and there's five of these 38 millimeter grains. So 
we'll insert that into the rocket. Flip over the seal. Install the seal disc into one end. Pro tip, the forward seal disc, there is a forward and aft side. So there's a, a the top side is a little bit wider than the bottom side. The reason being, it will fit snugly into the grain liner. If you put it the other way, it doesn't seat itself. So make sure that forward seal disc gets seated in there correctly. There we go. So there's the seal disc. Then the O-ring goes in over the disc. That O-ring, the way you know that, that it goes there, is this O-ring is actually going to end up on this, on that little groove. So the O-ring is going to go in, and then this will go in, but we need to put in the ejection charge, and then we're going to put in one of the adapters. So let's put in our ejection charge. So it comes with about one and a half grams of black powder. I'm going to put that in the well. That very nearly fills it up. To be sure, I'm going to put a little bit of dog barf insulation in there. Nice and snug. And then it comes with a, a white sticker you can put over that. I trust that sticker not much at all. If you want to trust your powder to stay put with the sticker, be my guest. I'm going to use tape. I would rather get my rocket back. There we go. This is going to go in on top of that O-ring, and then we're going to put in an adapter. And then we lock down the forward closure. So if we look inside, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the adapter is going to hold everything in place and there's my ejection charge and so it's seated down from the end there and that's okay okay then we're going to um, i'm going to put the aft insulator back in i'm going to put the aft o-ring it's the fat one goes in. So we've got the insulator and the O-ring. The nozzle. And the aft closure. And snug it down. Good. Now I've used all my parts. There's nothing left. Uh, all that's left is the cap that goes over the nozzle for the igniter, and that's ready for launch. When it's done, I need to make sure I save that forward seal disc. That's not disposable. Normally, you just push everything out of the case and throw it away, but you want to retrieve that as well as that silver spacer that's in there. 
We'll see you at launch tomorrow.